All right, welcome back to Factoring. When we talked last, um, we talked about doing check to see if it has a greatest common factor. And then also you've got to see how should you factor it. If it has two terms, chances are it's the difference of two perfect squares. Um, and if you've already taken out a greatest common factor if possible, again, you did um, talk about how to factor by the difference of two squares. The third thing um, would be is see if it's a trinomial. And we talked on the previous video about just kind of guessing and checking to find out what are the final answers. And as long as your answer foils back to get to the original problem, you did a great job. Um, if you had um, Ms. Barr or um, Mrs. House or if you had Mr. Maroney or if you actually had me for a teacher before, you might have talked about something called the AC box or you might have talked about something called MARF. And so these would be opposed or you know another way, a longer way to do the guess and check. And the deal is that if you looked at, say, this problem right here, um, 4x squared plus 12x plus 5, an easy way to do this problem is to say, well, what times what makes 4x squared, and then what times what makes 5, and say, as long as when I FOIL it back, I get back to the original problem, I'd be fine. And so if you are efficient at guessing and checking, this is really a great idea to do that. And so you could say, well, to make 4x squared, you could either do 1 times 4 or 4 times 1, okay, and you could try that and try, let's try 1 and let's try 5, and if you check it, you're going to get 4x squared, okay, plus 20x, plus 1x, and then plus 5. Not really a great idea. And so, guessing and checking, um, you just kind of go until you get to the appropriate right answer. And so this doesn't really work because these do not equal your original problem. So what you can do is you can switch where the 5 and the 1 go, and that's actually not going to work. So let's try switching up this coefficient of the x squared. Let's try 2x squared and 2x squared. And if we FOIL these out, we are going to get 4x squared, and it's going to be plus 10x plus 2x, and then plus 5. And as you can tell, this actually works to equal the original problem. If you wanted to try the AZ box, or if you want to try um, MARFing, this is how you would do the problem. So I'll start over here. And we should end up with the same answer. So you take, we're saying that it's AX squared plus BX plus C. The coefficient of the x squared term is the a, the coefficient of the x term is the b, and then the c term is the constant. So you take a times c and you put it in a box. 4 times 5 is 20. And to make a positive 20, you can either multiply two positives or two negatives to get 20. Um, and because the middle term is going to be a positive 12, you're going to use two positives. And you think about what are the, the factors that multiply to make 20 but will also give you a 12. And so you say, okay, how about 2 times 10? Positive 2 times positive 10 will make 20, and 2 and 10 make 12. And so that's kind of the, the thing is you could try 4 times 5, but 4 times 5 makes 20, but it doesn't give you the 12. So what you're going to do then is when you do AC box is you t times A times C, you put it in the box, you find the factors that multiply to make the number in the box, and also that they make the middle number as well. well we're going to take this trinomial and to make it into a polynomial with four terms. Well, we can't replace it with something that's not true. We can replace it with something equivalent to that expression. So we're going to take the first term and bring it down, 4x squared. You're going to make the middle term be this right here. It's going to be 2x plus 10x. Notice 2x and 10x make 12x, 2 times 10 make 20. And then you're going to bring down the fourth term, which is 5. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take, um, you're going to factor by grouping essentially. Factor out the greatest common factor of the first two terms, which is 2x. You're left with 2x plus 1. You're going to factor out the greatest common factor of the third and fourth term, which would be a positive 5. Put a sign there. You're left with 2x plus 1. And then you examine what you have left. Okay, What you have left and what's in common between these two groups, factor by grouping, look at these two groups. The common factor is 2x plus 1. And what remains when you get rid of that are the numbers 2x plus 5. That's going to be what goes in your second binomial. Okay, so your first one is going to be the one that's in common, the 2x plus 1. When you cover those up, what's remaining is 2x plus 5, should be your second one. 
And if you FOIL this out, you should get back to your original problem. Again, it's the same answer we got as the previous one. It's just a couple more steps. And so if you feel comfortable doing that, it's a completely fine thing to do. In my opinion, if I were to pick, I would pick Guess and Check. Why? Because I, if you practice it, Guess and Check is actually easier. So let's talk about this. To Guess and Check, okay, we'll just put this above. You know it's 3x times x. Okay, how do you make 6? It's either 1 times 6 or 2 times 3, and you could try them, okay? So if we do, and it's going to be a negative 6, so 1's positive, 1's negative. And so let's check and see what would be a good choice. We could try um, 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. Let's try 6. One, I'll put a, po a 1 and a 6 here. And let's do a negative and a positive. We'll just write it boldly, that's fine. And your middle terms are going to be negative 18 plus 1. Negative 18 plus 1 is not going to make 7. Okay, so that's not a good choice. So let's try something else. We could try the opposite. We could try 6 and 1. And when you do outside inside, you get 3 and 6. 3 and 6 make 9. That's not, you know, actually it wouldn't be 9. Um, that would be 3 and 6 would be 3. Okay, because one's positive and one's negative. So let's try 2 and 3. So you get, when you multiply, you get 3x squared minus 9x plus 2x, and that's going to be minus 6. Now this is close. Do you see how it gives you a negative 7x instead of a positive 7x? Sometimes you can fix this situation when it's off by a sign. When one's positive, one's negative, is just switch the sign. So let's make this a positive, and let's make this a negative and see if that fixes it. Okay, so you get 3x squared, and then you get a positive 9x, and then this will become a negative 2x, and then minus 6. This will work. And so that's our answer. So given a couple tries, we, got, we have something that works. How would you do the very same problem with AC box? Well, you take A times C, and you put your answer in the box. It's negative 18. How do you multiply to make a negative 18? Well, positive and a negative. You need factors that multiply to make negative 18, but also will make together to make a 7. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take 1 times 18, or 2 times 9, or 3 times 6, and let's do 2 times 9. If you do a positive 2 and a negative 9, that will give you a negative 18. A positive 2 and a negative 9 make a negative, or make a 7. A oh, actually, that's wrong, isn't it? Let's switch the signs. Okay, we need a negative 2 and a positive 9 because that will give us a 7x. So now, to do AC box, you bring down the first term, 3x squared. Your second term will be replaced with these two items, a negative 2x plus 7x and then minus 6. Okay, so you see, actually it's a 9, um, you see that their sum makes this, okay, and the product of these two also has to give you the number in the box. So how do you finish this problem off? You've got to factor by grouping, which is take the GCF of the first two, which is going to be an x. You're left with 3x minus 2. And look at the GCF of the third and fourth term, and that would be a 3. You get 3x minus 2. If these two groups don't match up, you might have to factor out a negative sign or something like that. So we'll look at this, and notice the groups are alike. And so you take the first, the group that's alike, that's your first answer, so you remove that. What remains? Okay, it's x plus 3. Oh, you can't see behind my finger. So it would be x plus 3. So you, the group, the binomial that's in common will be your first answer. That's the 3x minus 2. Cover that up. What's left? x plus 3. If you find the product of these two binomials, you should get back to this original problem. And notice that's the exact same answer we got when we factored by guess and check. And I don't care how you best do this. It's your call what would be your favorite way to get your answer. I do care that you get it. I mean, that's the biggest deal. Okay, let's try one more. 2 times 3 gives us 6. And if you want to do AC box, I'm just going to demonstrate this one more. Um, to get a positive 6, either 2 positives or 2 negatives. So we're going to do 2 negatives because the middle sign is negative. So 1 times 6 is what we'll do. Negative 1 and negative 6 make negative 7. Negative 1 times negative 6 makes positive 6. We're going to bring down the first term. We're going to make replace the second term with two terms. And now we're going to do factor by grouping. 
So let's take out a GCF of the first two. That'd be a 2x. You're left with x plus or minus 3. The third term is negative. You've got to factor out a negative if the third term is negative. So take out a negative 1. You always have to take out something even if it's just a 1. And we're going to do x minus 3. The item that's in common is x minus 3. And the item that remains is 2x minus 1. And if you FOIL that out, it should equal your original problem. Also, I think the big thing is, even if I don't make a big sign that says do the GCF first and then AC box, you should always look at this and say, you know what, I don't really want to find the product of 500 and negative 7, seven or negative or 50 and negative 70. Um, it, that's going to be a huge number. Um, even if you're going to guess and check, it's always best to take out the GCF first. And so if you take out the GCF of a 10, you're left with x squared minus 2x minus 7. And then you can look at this and say, okay, you know what? I can, oh actually I forgot the 5, um, I can either guess and check or I can AC box it. And this one honestly, because 5 and 7 there's really only one way to do it, either 5 times 1 or 1 times 5 and 7 times 1 and 1 times 7, in my opinion that's going to be your best choice. Guess and check, 5x and x, and it's either going to be 7 times 1 or 1 times 7. In The negative will go one or the other places. Um, let's think about this and see if we can come up with it. If we do a 7 here, we're going to get a 35 and we're going to get a 1. 35 and a 1 is not going to get us there. So let's try the 1 here and the 7 here. Okay, and who knows about the signs? It's okay, we're looking for a negative 2. So we want the bigger one to be negative. So let's try this. If you FOIL this, you're going to get 5x squared plus 5x minus 7x and minus 7. That will give us exactly this. You do need to put a 10 on your answer because once you FOIL that, you'll get back up to here. And then you put the 10, distribute the 10, and you'll get back to your original problem. So that's right. Um, in my opinion, guess and check would be your best, best option for that. Okay, um, a couple extra things. Um, when I put on the board a problem like this. Um, 3x squared minus 10x is equal to 8. And I said solve it, okay? Um, how do you solve this kind of a problem? Let's get it in standard form. You'd have to minus 8 from both sides, and you get minus 8 equals 0. Now, factor it. How do you factor it? You do 3x and x to make 3x squared. To make 8, you could either do 1 times 8, 2 times 4, or the opposites. And again, like I said, you can't get using the values of 8 to get to 10, okay, just like a baby can't get to the grocery store. You need a little help. Okay, let's get that 3 there. That 3 times 1 will help us get to that negative 10. And so if we try things, I don't, I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to look at the answer. Let's try 2 times 4. And so if we did this, we'd get 3x squared. We're going to get, let's put a negative and a positive. You're going to get positive 12x minus 2x and then minus 8. That is exactly close, but it's the wrong sign. And so if you've got one positive, one negative, one easy way to fix that is to just switch the signs on the binomials. And so if we make this to be a negative here and a positive there, you're going to get a negative 12x. Okay, that'll be a negative 12x here. Ooh. And a positive 2x. And that will give us exactly what we're looking for. Now, if it says solve, what you do to, when you get to here is to use the zero product property. So that means you take um, the zero product property means if you have the product of two items, okay, or multiple factors, and they, like A times B is equal to zero. If you have the product of two items and your answer is zero, you know either A is zero or B is zero or maybe even both of them are zero. So the thing is that the zero product property says times in two things to get zero, either one or the other or both are zero. And so what you have here is you've got two items and the product of these two items gives you zero. So either this one is zero or this one is zero. And you solve them both. 3x is equal to negative 2 divide by 3, x is equal to negative 2 thirds. That's one answer. The other answer is x is equal to 4. And that means if you plug in 4 into your original problem, it will work. You can try it. Take x squared. 4 squared 16 times 3, 48. 48 minus 4 times 10 is 40. Hey, that equals 8. Okay, you could try negative two thirds. I don't know if I'm brave enough to do that right the second, but you could take negative two thirds squared or two thirds, and then you square it times it by three. 
minus 10 times it, and you should get 8 as well. So both of those are your answers. All right, I hope this helps. I'll talk to you later. Bye.